Hey, welcome back to my channel, Duct Tape Mechanic. In this video, I'm going to show you how to interface this wireless RF transmitter and receiver with an Arduino. Um, this will give you wireless control over your projects, and I'm going to cover the basic theory of how this is going to work, the wiring, and the code. So if you like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel, Duct Tape Mechanic, for more DIY and tinkering videos. This is a generic 433 MHz RF transmitter and receiver I picked up for a couple of bucks on Amazon. I'll drop the link below if anybody is interested. Um, it has a wide operating voltage of 3.5 to 12 volts. It doesn't come with any sort of written instructions, but it's um, fairly easy to figure out how it works from the writing on the terminals. The black wire is the negative coming from the power source, with the red wire next to that one being the positive coming from the power source. Then the red wire next to that one is the positive output from is the positive output from the receiver, and the yellow is the negative output. Um, the module itself is uh, meant to be hooked up directly to whatever it is you're trying to power. So it will essentially output whatever voltage you apply to it. So if you're powering up the receiver with 12 volts, it will output 12 volts with a maximum output of 15 watts. Um, so that's a limitation itself. And this device and all the more reason um, to interface this with an Arduino. To demonstrate how it works I hooked up a 5 volt wall wart power supply. Um, I ran out of red and black alligator clips so uh, red and white um, wires will have to do. Um, just know that I'm applying 5 volts to the receiver. Then I added a green alligator clip wire to the red lead of my multimeter and hooked the other end of that wire to the positive output of the receiver. I also added a yellow wire to the black lead and hooked that end to the negative output of the receiver. Um, and this will allow me to measure the output of the receiver. As you can see, when the button on the transmitter is pressed, the output voltage goes to 5 volts, and when it, it is released, it goes to some small millivolt value close to zero. Um, this actually presents another limitation of using this module directly, because um, what if you wanted to press the button once and wanted to drive a motor for 30 seconds? Well, that's when the Arduino comes in. To interface the RF switch with the Arduino, we'll be using this small chip called the PC817 optocoupler. The PC817 allows us to connect two different circuits while still keeping them electrically isolated. It does this using a phototransistor. So basically, when voltage is applied to the LED in the PC817, it turns on the phototransistor and allows current to flow from the collector to the emitter. And if you hold the PC817, with the uh, marking being in the upper left hand corner of the chip, it is easy to, easy to identify which pin is the anode and cathode of the LED and which pin is the collector and emitter of the phototransistor. The wiring to this demonstration is relatively simple. Um, I placed the optocoupler in the middle of the breadboard, then I connected a 1 kilo ohm resistor to the anode side of the PC817. Um, this will prevent the LED from burning out. Uh, then I connected the other end of the resistor to the positive rail of the breadboard.
After that, I connected the red output wire from the RF receiver to the positive rail of the breadboard, and I also connected the yellow negative output from the receiver to the cathode of the PC817. After that, I connected a blue wire to pin number two of the Arduino, with the other end of that wire being connected to the collector of the PC817. I connected a orange wire to the ground of the Arduino, with the other end of that wire being connected to the emitter of the PC817. For this demonstration, I will be wiring up a 5 volt buzzer. I connected a yellow wire to the positive terminal of the buzzer and connected the other end of the wire to pin number 7 of the Arduino. Then I connected a green wire to the negative terminal of the buzzer and connected the other end to the ground of the Arduino. Then I used the USB for my computer to power up the Arduino and thus the wiring was complete. The code to this is really simple. An internal pull-up resistor is used on pin number 2 with the input pull-up command, and pin number 7 is made into an output. So basically, when the button is pressed, pin number 2 is grounded, causing it to go low. This causes the buzzer to turn on for 5 seconds and then turn back off. As you can see, this works really well, and apparently this transmitter is supposed to work from up to 20 meters away, so the potential uses for this are endless.